Hello everyone. I welcome you all back to this lecture series. In this session, I am going to start your experiment number two, which is based on the shell scripting. In previous session, I have discussed few of the fundamental commands of Linux or you can say Bash. So before starting the shell script in detail, first we will review the previous experiment and then we will see the very important thing related to shell scripting so that you can smoothly understand the shell scripting concepts. So let's begin with the uh, review question of experiment one which we have done. So let's try to answer this question. The question is which command is used to list a directory contained? And you can type your answer in the comment section. So you can comment your answer. Okay, so that I can see later whether you are doing it or not. It is very easy question. We have discussed in the previous session. So the answer of this we use the command ls to list out the directory contained. So ls for list directory contained. Now let's do the next question, the review question of experiment one. Which command is used to rename a directory? So if we want to rename a directory, which command we should use? Now again, you can type your answers in the comment section. So I hope you are already aware about this is very easy question. So if we want to rename a directory or a file in both the cases, we can use MV command. So the answer will be D. Now let's look at one more review question. Which command is used to switch from one user to another? So let's say you have logged in as user one and you want to change and you want to access or logged in as user two, then which command? will be used or let's say you have logged in as normal user and you want to change your prompt as super user or root user then which command should be used you can type your answer in the comment section so as i have already discussed in the previous session the command su command switch user command su command will be used to switch from one user to another in case it is required. Now let's start our discussion of today's session. In today's session primarily we are discussing about the fundamental thing which is required to understand shell scripting. So the very first and very important thing before we start shell script we need to understand the directory hierarchy of Linux system. So let's talk about the directory hierarchy or directory structure. In Linux system, any of the Linux system, any of the Linux flavor, when we install it, like Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, or Red Hat, or CentOS, any, any flavor, once we install the Linux, some default directories will be created inside our hard disk. So these directories are created by the system at the time of installation, and these directories are very, very important. So in order to work on any of the Linux system, we need to understand the directory structure. So if we try to deal with certain kind of files, we need to know the location of the file. Let's say uh, I want to create a file temporarily, which should be deleted automatically by the system. In that case, we can use temp directory, TMP, temp directory. So there are directories in Linux. We consider the very first thing. This is we consider as this is the root directory. So root directory is there. This is I am writing root directory. Let me change the color. So this is root directory. Okay. Linux file system is a complete hierarchical system in which everything is connected to root. But in case of Windows, in Windows every drive has its own root. So let's say if this is C drive, it will have its own root. If it is D drive, 
it will have its own root but further there is no single root where these drives will be connected so this is missing in windows so we can say windows file system doesn't have the complete hierarchical system but linux everything whatever their drives you have created or whatever you have created or you have mounted any external drive in the system everything will be connected with a single root so that directory we consider as root directory now inside the root directory there are different directories like bin like dev etc usr home live sbin tam where etc etc so inside usr also there are some important directory like bin man live local share and inside where there are logs log tam so there are different directories one or two directories may be varying depends upon the flavor of linux which you are using but moreover these directories are available in all the flavors of linux operating system so let's look at the description of these directories these directories like if we talk about the bin directory first the bin directory the bin directory contains the user binaries so binary files like you can consider executable file kind of thing which can directly be executed by clicking on them or by typing the complete path of that file on the prompt so these binaries are available your generally your commands are available in this directories so there are two types of commands internal and external commands internal commands uh, let's say so i'm saying command command i have discussed in the previous class previous session commands are programs only those are executable in nature so commands are of two types internal commands and external and i told you shell is a command line interpreter so shell is also a software it is an interpreter which can interpret the commands now what is the internal commands commands as i told you these are programs only if the program or the command definition is included inside the shell itself then the command will be considered as internal command like shell is a software and that software internally contains some of the some of the definition of the commands so those commands considered as internal command and there are certain external command later on after development of the shell many of the developer because open source is every day evolving so many of the developers they write good code useful code and they submit to the open source community if community find out the co source code or the code is very useful they include in the distribution right so that useful code considered as a command and that will be available as a separate file apart from the shell so that will be treated as external command internal commands are built in command inside the shell so if you find out any file with that name let's say cd command cd is built in command so if you find out any file with name as cd you will not be able to find out but let's say ls ls is an external command so you can find out a file inside this bin directory with that ls name okay we will see later on so bin contains the user binaries binaries like commands only then there is sbin also sbin contains the system binaries system binaries and user binaries system related to system there are certain executable files etc directory inside root contains the configuration file of the system so related to environment or a number of other things like username or different different variables are there so there are different files which configure the environment when we boot up the system then this device directory contains the device files so devices are also recognized as a file in the 
Linux file system, right? But there is a separate category for devices considered as device file. Then there is proc directory that is important. We will discuss this directory when we will talk about the process management. So this contains the process information. Process I told you it is a program in execution. You remember we discuss later. Then where directory it contains the variable files or files those are having variable nature like log files. So every moment some events are going on inside the machine and all the events are getting recorded inside the log files. So the nature of the log files are continuously updating. That's why we consider these files are variable files and such kind of files will be created inside where directory. Then TMP directory is available inside root. So if we want to create any temporary file, which I suppose system itself delete after some time, then I create such kind of file inside temp directory. Then USR, USR contains the user related programs. Then home, home directory is important actually when we log in to any of the system. So let's say you are in my system, I have a user called student. So when I log in to a student user, every user generally have a home directory inside a home directory which is available inside root. So let's say root directory is there. Inside root directory there is a home directory. And if I have created a student user, there must be a directory named as a student in home directory. So if you create user1, then there will be a user1 directory inside the home directory. Right? So every user will have its home directory with username only inside the home directory. So this is very important because generally we log in inside this system and by default we will get that particular location of the home of that user. Then boot directory. Boot directory contains the bootloader related files. Bootloader is a module which plays an important role when we power on the machine. So it takes the responsibility to do the booting and load the operating system from secondary storage or you can say hard disk inside the room. Then LIB, it contains the system libraries. Then OPT, some optional applications if we install, the related files of such kind of applications will be available in OPT. And then MNT, if we mount any device, mounting we will discuss later on. So if we mount any device, which may have similar file system or different file system compared to the, the file system which are available in our system. Then such kind of devices will be mounted in MNT directory. Media directory. So if any media is available which is removable like flash drive, pen drive or any external hard disk that will be available or mounted inside the this media directory. And then SRV. SRV contains the service related data. So generally when a service is running, maybe related to network or any other service, the data related to services is stored inside this directory. Right? So these are the directories. You need to know the nature of these directories, how we can deal with it, what type of files will be available where, that is the point which we must be clear about before writing the actual shell scripts. Okay? So let's jump on to uh, the actual machine and let's check how these directories are visible in the system. Okay. So here we are on our screen. Let me increase our size a bit. Okay. So now you can see it clearly. If I type ls here, or if I want to see my present working directory, I am inside my student user home. As I told you, a student is the username. And this is the home directory of my student user, which is created inside the home directory, which is available inside root directory. So if I want to check the top level of hierarchy, I can use ls command on root. Root means forward slash. So if you put forward slash, 
powers let's represent the root directory in linux system so i want to check the content of root directory the content is uh, there are certain files af s dev home media proc swin tam bin lib mnt root srv usr versus so there are certain different things are also available but moreover which we have discussed all the directories are available here so if we talk about like home directory if you check ls inside root there is home directory you can check the content of home directory so there are different users created like devops users or cloud users and one user which i am using is a student so its home is also available like a student home if you check the bin directory then you can type ls less root bin and this contains the binaries so binaries like executable file in windows you can check here there are whole lot of binaries available whatever the command we type if a command is external command that command is available here okay so let's say if you want to check any command let's say let's say you want to check ls then if you scroll down you will find out ls command here because ls is one of the external command okay so you check it the ls command which we type that is available here you can check it so this is ls command if you delete this particular file your ls command will not work right so if you delete the files related to the external commands then those commands will not be working like less is one of the command ln is one of the command we will see it later on so just remember the important thing then i close it i don't want to make this lecture lengthy rest of the things we will cover in the sequential lectures so if you want to check whether a command is internal or external you can use type command if i want to check the type of cd command it is telling me cd is a shell built in that means it is internal command that means there will not be any separate file for cd the definition of cd is available inside shell itself okay now if you check the type of let's say mkdir it is displaying the path of mkdir so it is available inside bin and inside bin directory there is mkdir file is available and that file is actually responsible to execute when you are typing mkdir so this is external command okay so i hope with this description you are aware about the complete directory structure of linux and you are also aware about the internal commands and external commands okay so i'm closing this with this see you in the next class thank you for connecting